Hey everyone, it's Eric Jensen again, here for some more sports talk. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this week we've got a smaller and shorter week of college football stuff, but uh, let's let's dig right in and then I'll uh, carry some, you know, talk about some other stuff. Um, the, we've got a few games, Wake Forest at Army. Wake Forest is still undefeated. And they're going up against a pretty darn good Army team. I think oh, Wake Forest will still win. Um, though I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Army pulls it up, especially since they're at home. But give me Wake Forest. I've got Wisconsin and Purdue. Purdue coming off the big upset. I think Purdue will win. We've got Oklahoma State and Iowa State. I think this is a sneaky, really good game. And... Um, and I like Oklahoma State to to continue to win this one. Uh, so yeah, then we've got Oregon at UCLA. Um, UC, uh, UCLA has been okay. Oregon hasn't looked as good recently. I think they will bounce back in this one, and I think the Ducks will win. And I think they'll win handily. I I think they'll win by about ten to fourteen points. Um, we've got LSU and Ole Miss. LSU is no longer going to have Ed Orgeron at the end of the season. And um, I think Ole Miss wins this pretty big. I Going on LSU for a little bit, I don't understand why you would fire your head coach and then keep him the rest of the season. I know Ed Orgeron's a good guy that decided to stay on for the rest of the season, but... It doesn't make sense, and uh, and he had a really good record at LSU for them to fire him. Um, I'll I'll come in to the you know different programs and which coaching opportunity is better at the end. Uh, so we'll we'll save that. They've got Clemson at Pitt. Clemson has not looked good, but their defense is really good. Pitt's got a really good offense and a really good quarterback. And I think that Clemson will overcome that. So even though Clemson hasn't looked good at all, I think they're still they're still gonna move on up. We've got BYU visiting Washington State. Washington State now doesn't have Rolovich anymore. I talked about him in the last episode. I'll probably touch on this again. I just still can't. I, I, I think it's awful. But um, I don't believe, uh, I know there's the sports media people, they're, they're just so happy because they hate anyone that disagrees with them on any subject. And so, uh, and so they just think Washington State is going to be great now that their head coach is gone. They're not going to be. BYU is going to win this one. Um, BYU is going to win it comfortably. Um, I feel bad for Washington State. I, I, I do, but I think BYU is going to win that. We've got Tennessee at Alabama. Tennessee has been an improving team under uh, Heupel, but I they're not Alabama. And Alabama's home, and Alabama will crush the Volunteers, unfortunately. Uh, and again, take all these uh, predictions with a grain of salt because uh, <laughs> I'm pretty bad at these. Uh, San Diego State at Air Force. San Diego State still undefeated. Air Force is very good. Um, I think Air Force is going to pull this upset, and they will win. So San Diego State's going to go down. I, I not that uh, not that I covered this, but Coastal Carolina went down earlier this week. So there was another one of the top twenty, uh, my top twenty-five. They're no longer worth it. <laughs> They're not going to be up there anymore. Um, anyways, Nevada at Fresno State. I think Fresno State's going to win. I keep on thinking they're better than what they were, and they've showed glimpses, but um, I don't trust Nevada, even though Nevada's only got the one loss on the season. I think Fresno State is still a better team and they're home, so in a close one. I think this one is a sneaky, really good game to watch if you're just wanting to watch college football. We've got Utah at Oregon State. This is uh, this is another a good game. Utah's in control of the Pac-12 South. 
Uh, Oregon State still has a chance for the Pac-12 North. Um, uh, s slimmer, but uh, they still they still have a chance. Um, <clears throat> and I think the Beavers are better than Utah. I, I still don't think Utah is all that good. Even I, I could be completely wrong because they have been playing better in these past couple weeks. And they turned it on against Arizona State in the second half. So they... I just, I, I've, I'm struggling to say that Utah is going to win, especially since it's at Corvallis. I think the Beavers are going to win. I think the Beavers are a little bit better. And then the biggest game of all is USC visiting Notre Dame. So let's dig into this one a little bit. <clears throat> USC, uh, both are coming off a of bias, which favors Notre Dame. Why? Because Notre Dame has a competent coaching staff and USC has does not. And so, so schematically, USC is going to get beat. Uh, they can overcome that. And they've got some key players coming back. They've got their nose tackle coming back. He has a, he's been injured all season long. He'll be back. That should help and hopefully free up Drake Jackson. They've been just... A second off of getting the, the QB pressure that they need to get sacks and and that sort of stuff. So hopefully that will make a difference. the The problem is their linebacker play has been horrible, and and Notre Dame is although the, Notre Dame is not good. Let's get that out of the way in the beginning. USC totally can win can win this game, even though USC isn't good because Notre Dame isn't good. So they're both not good football teams. Notre Dame should be probably three and three on the season, just like USC. Uh, the difference being that Notre Dame wasn't getting blown out. Notre Dame is more physical than USC, though, and that's what I'm worried about. I think, uh, I, I mean, it would take something spectacular and some crazy individual efforts for USC to win this game because I just think Notre Dame is going to be able to wear them down and run it down USC's throat, unfortunately. Uh, so so prediction-wise, I think Notre Dame is going to win. I think it's going to be a close game, a uh, closer game. I think it'll probably be like 35 to 24 uh, Notre Dame, but probably a little bit closer and Notre Dame pushes it out at the end. <clears throat> but uh, I think it'll be a frustrating game with USC not being able to get the ball, you know, on offense. And for some reason, they just, like I've been saying all season, they just don't sync up well on their drives and they don't have the real big plays to get, you know, a 80 yard touchdown pass or whatnot. No one gets open. Drake London, his, like, he's got more contested catches than, like, uh, almost everyone in the entire country combined, it seems like, that all his catches are are contested. What does that mean? It means that he's not getting schemed open. They're not getting him easy catches, unfortunately. Um, I, I still think they need to push the football down the field. I don't know how um, Jackson Dart is. If he's not almost at 100%, I wouldn't put him in. Uh, I don't want I wouldn't want him to get beat up in there uh, and lose confidence in there um if he is I wouldn't mind seeing him in there uh, some of the time because there's just something about him where he's he's you know maybe taking dumb chances but he pushes the ball down the field in a way that Slovis hasn't um the Slovis has been real smart with the football I think a lot of the time but just Sometimes you've got to make something happen, and that hasn't been happening. So, uh, that, so again, I think Notre Dame is probably going to win. They're probably going to run it down USC's throat, to, and that's going to be how they're going to end up with the victory. Uh, uh, on to the coaching carousel and whatnot. LSU opens up. I don't know. I don't remember even. It's been so long. It seems like since the last one, even though it was earlier this week. Can't remember if I talked about it, but Ed Orgeron's out. 
And so we've got the LSU job and the USC job. I got stupid USC fans going, oh, we like Ed Ocheron. He should come to USC. No, no, uh, no, don't get me wrong. I would love for Ed Ocheron to come to USC as an offensive line assistant coach, <laughs> not as a head coach. Um, he He's not what we should be getting. And again, um, get someone that other people want. The, if other people are wanting that guy, that's a good a good thing. If other people don't want him, probably you want to pass on him. Um, but which job is better? I've been hearing this. LSU versus USC. LSU gets the entire state there on their own, and they're, they will support the football team better than USC does, which is a shame and a crime, but it is a fact. <clears throat> but I still think USC is the better job on, on top of things because USC has <clears throat> USC has the uh, California all to itself if they're good if they've got someone competent there if they can close you know California off to outside you know outside schools USC has the advantage plus um Plus, I think you have an easier road to win and consistently win in the Pac-12 rather than the SEC West. You're not competing against Saban for however long he's going to be there. So I, I'd i say that and USC historically is better than LSU. So one, I think you get better players. You're in a better situation conference-wise. And those are the two big reasons why I think USC is a better job than LSU. LSU has only got that they'll probably pay more money. And, you know, okay. Um, I just want to touch back on that Rolovich thing with that. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I just keep reading about this stuff. And, and it just grates on my nerves. Uh, John Wilner, he's a reporter, uh, and he just is so happy that, and that, uh, that Washington State fired Rolovich. And, and he's, you know, they're, uh, they're, Washington State is out of a nightmare. Uh, and because, all because one guy decided, um, didn't want to get a vaccine. Well, we could reverse that and say, well, how about they're in a nightmare because one guy decided that he was going to force everyone to take a vaccine. I, you could go either way. Personally, I like the way of more individual liberty and freedom. And anyways, now I just, so, I mean, personally, I know people that have lost jobs because they, they don't want to take the vaccine. Again, I don't think that's what I would do, but I do know people that do that, and I, it's, I just, <laughs> I think it's wrong, especially it's wrong to be celebrating this. I feel really bad for Washington State and their football team, and, and I think it's, the entire situation is just a joke. Um, what else is going on? Oh, Champions League, Manchester United came back in a dramatic fashion. Um, down 2 nothing at halftime. They come storming back to win 3-2. And they've got a big game against Liverpool. Probably, you know, I still think City, Manchester City is probably the top of the league, but Liverpool's looking really good too. So it'll be interesting to see what lineup they put out there. Uh, it's good to see Rashford back, but oh my goodness, they they miss so many chances. Uh, just hit the shots and um, and and hold on to the ball. It, it'll be interesting to see um, what happens this week. Anyways, I'm rambling on way too long, so uh, hopefully we get a USC victory in South Bend. Hopefully Manchester United wins. Hopefully. Um, Hopefully we just keep on winning. So fight on and have a good. Bye.